right now I'm joined by Robert Sellers with his book Little Earn. Hi Robert, how are Hi. you? So this is a book all about uh, Ernie Wise. Yes. And uh, you wrote this with uh, another um, author as well. James Hogg, yeah, it's, uh, it's quite a strange experience. So most of the books I've written before, all of them in fact, I, I've written on my own, but uh, so it's an experience to write with somebody else. So it's uh, quite a strange experience, particularly when he lives about 100 miles away. Really? <laughs> so there's lots of emails going backwards and forwards. So and stuff. how did you write it? Who, who took on what role? Uh, with this, this particular book, um, he did all the groundwork, he did all the research and the interviews, and I just literally did the the hard graft of actually physically doing the writing. People like it, uh, Ernie Wise, it's, you've got to be interested in the subject. Yeah, I've got to have a passion for the subject. And all the books that I've written are books that I would like myself to read. Yeah, and um, the thing about Ernie Wise is, um, he's obviously one half of Morecambe mm. and Wise. Most people know, think of Eric Morecambe as the main star of that. Yeah. But in this book, you learn that actually Ernie Wise deserves as much of a you know, celebration of his well, career. Ab absolutely, that's the reason, the primary reason for writing it, really. I mean, he's not forgotten. I mean, everyone still knows yeah. who Ernie Wise is, but I think he's the undervalued. The little man with the hairy legs. Exactly, yeah, <laughs> but he's undervalued. Yeah, he is, actually, because um, I was watching his stuff on YouTube and I thought he was equally as good yeah. as Eric. I didn't yeah. really see... Yeah, I was interested. There, there was um, about 2005, Channel 4 did this big programme about top... 50 greatest comedians mm. and they interviewed about a hundred comics and writers and comedy directors to for them to choose their favorite uh, comedian yeah and in the top 10 you had laura and hardy you had reeves and mortimer mm -hmm. and you had eric morcom oh. you didn't have morcom and wise that's really that's sad though because so they mentioned the other the other duos but then they yes. just mentioned the one so we thought we'd shift the, s the, the spotlight sideways and mm. concentrate on ernie and we got in touch with doreen who's ernie's widow and she'd mm. never been approached before by any writer really? to write a book on her husband. And wow. there's been about six or seven books on Eric. And That's quite that, rightly, yeah. I mean, he's a comedy genius, yeah. Eric. Um, he's this amazing comedy comet. Um, but we just thought he, he deserves a little bit of the spotlight. So I'm it sure was, you'd it be was very wonderful pleased that you did that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, Ernie, because I think Ernie was more of a sum and dance kind of guy, wasn't he? He grew yes, up. Yes, that was his heritage, yeah, uh, six he, years he, old. Yeah, his father. I uh, was a railway man, worked on the railways, but in the uh, weekends he would he had his little little thing, he would, he would go to the working men's clubs mm. in Leeds and do a little bit of song and dance and tell jokes. And when Ernie was six, he sort of emulated his father yeah. and started doing tap dancing in the kitchen and telling jokes and stuff. And his father thought, there's, there's, li there's a little spark there. And um, so they became a double act. So the first double act that Ernie was in was not with <laughs> Eric, it was with his own father. Because um, Ernie was, you know, funny in his own right, but he was more of a song and dance kind of uh, boy, wasn't he? When he was growing up, he did that. He specialised in that. That's right, yeah. And he was, and he was like talent that, yeah. spotted yeah. when he was about 13. And he went to the West End. Uh, this guy called Jack Hilton, who was sort of the Simon Cowell of the 1930s. And he was a, a star performer in the West End when he was about 13 years old. So he was a star in his own right. And that's when he met Eric, actually. Eric came to audition for that show, and that's mm. the first time they met that's each when other. They met. Yeah. They didn't actually speak, but uh, Ernie was there in the stalls watching all these child actors do auditions, and he saw Eric come on mm. and thought, oh, there's a bit of competition here, because this guy's quite good. Yeah. But at the beginning, I think Ernie was getting actually most of the attention at that time in his life. That's right, yeah. Eric was the complete yeah. unknown, and Ernie was the star of this West End yeah, show. Yeah. yeah. And when did they decide? They decided to become a duo, didn't they, once they. Um, how, how did that even come about? There was a show called about? Youth Takes a Bow, which went round the country mm. touring, and Eric uh, was was in that, and they got together. Um, it was actually Eric's mother, Sadie, mm. who saw saw a little spark with, between them. You know, they were, if they went on long journeys to the next town to perform, um, they would tell jokes to each other, and they would sing and dance. And Sadie thought they would be a good idea to put them together, so it was actually her idea. And it was about 1941 was their professional, first professional performance in Liverpool. Right. Where they first performed together. Can we talk more about this after the break? Can you join me? It's been my pleasure. We'll be back after the break with more Loaded Chicks there. Welcome back to Loaded Chiclet, and I'm still joined by Robert Sellers with his book uh, Little Earn. 
and uh, this is obviously all about uh, Ernie Wise and uh, we were talking about how um, Ernie Wise and Eric, they met when they were kids and... Uh, 15, say, 15 years old, yeah. Wow, and yeah. this was when Ernie was in London performing on his own and he was all yeah. on his own and then... And they were, they, then they toured around yeah. the country in this, uh, in this show and um, as a, Eric had Sadie with him, his mother, yeah. a typical theatrical mum. Yeah. Ernie had no one, he was on his own because he was very independent from a very early age. And so he would always book ahead wherever the tour was going, Manchester, Derby, Liverpool, mm. wherever. He would always book a hotel room himself. And I think when they went to Oxford, this was during the war, this is the Blitz and bombing and everything. So they're, mm. they're touring the country, 1944, in the middle of the war years. And they arrived in Oxford and it was full of GIs and army people. So all the hotels were, were full. And Ernie was traipsing around, knocking on B&Bs and hotel rooms and they were being turned away. Mm. About the 20th one he tried, um, Sadie and Eric happened to be in that hotel. And Sadie heard Ernie pleading for a room. Really? And she said, he can come up here and join us. <laughs> you know, they, they had two beds, yeah. double bed and a single bed. So Sadie went in the single bed and Ernie and Eric went in the double bed. And that was the and beginning we, of that a That was the beginning of that. I mean, we, we, those <laughs> wonderful shows yeah. where they are in bed together, like Laura and Hardy. Yeah, very and much like real life. They did that in real yeah. life when they were young, <laughs> young kids. Yeah. And that's probably why they have such a special bond that you don't see with many um, yeah. duos. I mean, yes. they, they did because they were together from when they were young. That's right. And they had different roles. I mean, I think you get the idea that Ernie was definitely the the brains behind it, the yeah. business mind behind it. Very Probably much the business brain. Yeah. Eric would Eric felt very safe with Ernie, not only on stage but also off stage, because Ernie did all the deals, did all the business yeah. deals. Yeah. Quite a harsh um, deal maker as well. Very harsh. With yeah. <laughs> the image of him with uh, being a miser, which was the comedy yeah. character that he had, was yeah. an extension of his own personality. He was a bit of a miser because he came from very uh, working class stock, very poverty uh, ridden household. And he's, he saw his mother, you know, with the household, not much money. So um, he, he learned very early on, you know, to look after his money. Um, and that became a sort of a, a comedy part of his personality, yeah, you know, yeah. the, the, the miser and, you know, the, the jokes about the wallet, you know. And all of that. And, and all um, that kind of stuff, yeah. Do you think that him being the straight guy in it, probably, that's probably the main reason why he didn't get as much credit as, I think so. know, I as think they I developed their act I think he played the straight it's the curse yeah. of the straight man to be forgotten, I think, because it's it's the it's the it's the uh, the comedian who gets the punchline all the mm. time. It's the uh, the straight man who sort of you know give, gives the guy the, the the punchline, you know. But that was the genius of Ernie that he knew the exact right moment to to give Eric the best lines, you know. Uh, we interviewed Michael Parkinson for the book, and he said something wonderful. He said that um, Ernie was the the maypole that Eric danced around. Mm, that's I think a good that really sums yeah. it up, I think. That does sum it up. And they had great chemistry as well. Yeah, Fantastic no, they did, chemistry. like something very special there. Well, they'd been working for 40 years, so yeah. uh, instinctively they knew what each, each one was going to say. And then they brought, obviously, kind of this music hall kind of entertainment to the big screen. And yes. They had some flops, and then finally in the 70s, they yeah. they had their massive successes, yeah. and they were known to do, like, these sketches with celebrities yes. like Angela Rippon, which is, like, the most famous yes. one. And they were sort of an overnight success. Yeah. It took about 30 years to they get They took that. all that time, all yeah, that hard a, graft, all the, yeah, you know, yeah. honing of their craft, and then they're there. That's and it's right. effortless. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's... it's Billy Marsh was their agent, and he said they were like one. It, dealing with them was like one life form. They weren't mm. two people; they were almost like one person. It's fascinating. And John Mortimer said a wonderful thing as well. He, he said they were like a, a very English marriage, but missing <laughs> out on the sex like most English marriages do. <laughs> the sharing of the bed yes. from a very <laughs> young and age. And Eddie Braben as well. Eddie Braben, who wrote all those wonderful '70s shows, said you should take the and out. It was Morecambe Wise. It wasn't Morecambe and Wise. It was Morecambe Wise. They're yeah. like, uh, they really can, you can see the influences that they've had on comedians today or entertainers yeah. like Ant and Deck springs to yeah. mind. Yeah. Most well, we spoke to Ant and Deck yeah. for the book and people like yeah. uh, Miranda Hart as well. We yeah. spoke to and Ben Miller from Armstrong and Miller. You can see that actually, you can yeah. see the influence. And it was wonderful talking to these people because they, they, I mean, everyone's always talks about Eric, but it was lovely talking to these people about Ernie. Well, I think Ernie deserves credit too because I was watching those sketches and I think he was as funny. Yeah, actually. Yeah, I mean, if we accomplish one thing with this book, it's next time you watch a Morecambe and Wise show, yeah. 
don't watch Eric, watch Ernie. I was watching Ernie. Yeah. I was. Watch it. Watch I like Ernie. Eric, but Ernie's yeah. good too. I mean, he, he's like the glue <laughs> yeah. in those sketches. Yeah, he holds totally. it together. And you can see, I mean, Ernie would say he knew instinctively when, because the, these shows were incredibly, even though it looks like it's all off the cuff, because it's, the banter is so mm. spontaneous, but it, it was rigidly rehearsed. And they rehearsed for hours and hours and hours and hours until they got it right. But sometimes Eric would go off in these amazing flights of comedic fantasy. But Ernie was there and he would always pull Eric back. So Ernie was the controlling factor. Well, thank you for letting everyone know about Ernie Wise because people should know. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> this is it's a fantastic celebration, book. A celebration, yes, a celebration yeah. of Ernie Wise. Uh, so go out and get this book if you're interested in more Criminal Wise. That is Little Earn by Robert Sellers and James Hawkins.